This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on our online worship service through the Bethlehem Faith Community as we worship this in our second Sunday of Lent. A couple of announcements. First, we have already begun our Lenten journey 2021. Anne and Lexi are leading us through the theme, Bless This House. We will travel through a number of the rooms in our home where God's presence is surely felt. So join us either on our online recorded worship or in person at either noon or 6 p.m. on Wednesday. The second announcement is related to First Communion. We have the class scheduled for March 18th, 5th and 6th graders. We were not able to do this last year, so 5th and 6th graders will be receiving a letter reminding them that they are to come to the class on March 18th, and then they will be recognized in their First Communion on Monday, Thursday. Our last announcement is to simply let you know that this coming week, Lexi will be on a much deserved vacation. She has completed her CPE, her chaplaincy at Sanford, and deserves some time away after a uh, full, full schedule. So we wish her well in her vacation. Let's take a moment in silence as we turn to God and prepare ourselves for worship. We worship in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we turn to the rite of confession, and behind each of the four petitions, I will leave some time of silence so that you might reflect. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in our thoughts. We have sinned against you in our words. We have sinned against you in our deeds by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and being, and we have not loved our neighbors, your children, as you have loved us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk the path that you have set before us. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. So now receive this rite of absolution. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we are dead in our sin and makes us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, and as a called and ordained minister, I pronounce unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. May Almighty God strengthen you through the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Take a moment to listen to this gift of special music.
Would you bow in a word of prayer with me? Lord God, you ask us to take up your cross and follow you. But what does that cross look like? Help us today to look to your cross and look as well to the teachings that you have given to us as you call us to be your disciples and to make a difference in your kingdom right here, right now. In Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord, we pray. Amen. So we read for the second Sunday of Lent from the Gospel of Mark, the eighth chapter, the 31st verse. Then Jesus began to teach them, that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke Jesus. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. This is the gospel of the Lord. So I would like to begin by asking you, when you look back on your education years, what teachers in your past education years stood out for you? What teachers made a significant impact in your education journey? As I look back on my 20 years of education, I think of the teachers that impacted me and two basic characteristics pop up with each of those teachers whom I name. Elementary, high school, college years. These two characteristics come to the forefront. First, that teacher built a relationship with me that wasn't phony, but was real. They literally, figuratively cared for me and made me feel important. And the second characteristic is that teacher held me accountable. And because they held me accountable, Tim, you can do better work. Tim, this is not up to what you can do. 
they challenged me. And because they held me accountable and they challenged me, they gained my respect. So those two characteristics stood out for me as I started to name some of the teachers that greatly impacted me in my journey through education and continue to impact me even now. They cared about me and they challenged me. The teachers that didn't care anything about me were just putting in their time, getting their paycheck, so to speak. I blew them off. The teachers that didn't challenge me, that were easy, that somehow I could slide by, I blew them off as well. But the ones who cared and the ones who challenged today, even now, have impacted my life. Jesus is teaching his disciples and the crowds about this faith journey that they are about to enter. And a big part of that faith journey is picking up one's cross and following Jesus. But what does it mean when Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me? I don't think it refers to the cross in which Jesus was crucified on, where he was publicly executed in a horrific death. That's not what I think Jesus is referring to. But what I do think Jesus means when he says, Tim, pick up your cross and follow me, is that Jesus is going to give me and you specific teachings, and we are to pick those teachings up. Because God loves us, and because God is going to challenge us in such a way that we as disciples and children of God are going to be asked to live in a different way and create this kingdom of God right here, right now. And dare I say, life following Jesus is not easy. And it wasn't intended to be easy. Therefore, it's possible Jesus was referring to the cross we will all have to bear. Today, let me remind you that God in the person of Jesus has a special relationship with each and every one of us. Like those teachers that impacted you, you have a relationship with your Creator, with your Redeemer, with the one who sustains you day after day. But this also comes with a challenge, with an accountability, because Jesus' teachings are never easy. So imagine yourself in the crowd. Jesus is on that boat so he can get a little bit away. And he's holding up a syllabus. And on this syllabus is the lessons that Jesus is going to teach us. Or better yet, the lessons we know but that Jesus is going to remind us of. As Jesus challenges us to be his disciples, his voice, his hands in this needed world. So what might those lessons look like on that syllabus that Jesus is handing out to each of us? Lesson number one. Everyone is a child of God. We are all children of God. Despite what color our skin might be, despite what gender we might be, 
despite whatever background we have, despite whatever failure we have created, despite whatever culture we come from, all of us are children of God. No one is better or worse than another. For God, in the person of Jesus, cares, loves, forgives all of us. Lesson number one. Lesson number two. Jesus reminds us, and oh how we need to be reminded, Jesus reminds us that we're not here to take care of Tim Stowe. We're not here to take care of ourselves. We are here to take care of our neighbor's needs. That neighbor outside our backyard, that neighbor that's down the street, that neighbor that lives in Fargo-Moorhead, West Fargo metropolitan area, that neighbor that lives half a world away. God in the person of Jesus calls us to look at our neighbor's needs. And that is never easy, is it? Because our neighbor's needs will come at the most inconvenient time. And we're not talking about writing out a check. That's too easy but being there as God's hands and God's feet. And lesson number three on this syllabus is a God who calls us to be kind, to be gracious, to be courteous, to be civil. We live in such an uncivilized time. It is easier to yell at somebody than it is to offer a listening ear. When was the last time you were like a deer in the headlights? When your troubles boiled up and you found yourself in desperate need? Was someone there to offer a hug? or a kind word, or a reassuring, you're okay. The lessons that Jesus teaches us are direct, they're not easy, they are challenging, and yes, many times, those lessons, those teachings, will make us darn well uncomfortable. But those teachings from, come from a God who has built a relationship with each and every one of us through the cross and through an empty tomb. But now asks us to be accountable as servants in this world. But let me end this message, the second Sunday of Lent, with a Lutheran word of caution. And the Lutheran word of caution is, we take these lessons not because they will earn us God's love, God's love is already given to us. God's forgiveness is already granted to us. God's promise of new life is already ours. But the Lutheran word of caution is simply this. We do these lessons. We accept these challenges. We journey in this faith life as a response to what God has already done for us. These teachings are our call to respond to what you and I call the grace of God. God's accepting of who we are. God's never-ending love affair with each and every one of us. So answer the challenge, heed the teachings, 
go forth and be a disciple. Amen. We ask you to listen to the gift of special music as you reflect upon what you have just heard. We turn to the prayers of the church, so we ask you to take a moment in silence as we turn and pray the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Lord God, you are our teacher. So help us to hear the lessons that you give. Help us to know that these lessons are never meant to be easy and they will challenge us in and through the life that we live. But help us as your disciples to go forth and to follow your teachings. We pray this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as we continue our journey through Lent, we ask you, to help us through the gift of your spirit, to focus our eyes upon the cross. Not the cross of teachings, but the cross where you went and sacrificed your very own life to forgive us of our sinfulness. Help us to rest in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we think of the world that we are a part of and all of the amazing, wonderful things this creation brings to us each and every day that we so often take for granted. Help us to be good stewards of this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we ask that your healing touch continue to be present on these whom we name lifting up these within our immediate faith community. Lori Asmus, Darren Baumgartner, Sylvia Borscher, Linda Detman, Bob Drakeseth, Dwayne Enger, John Ferguson, Janet Fleeker, Carol Jebney, Bob Kenny, Carrie Leach, Alan Oak, Betty Opine, Ken Wienkowski, Maria Winters. And we ask and pray that you be with these from our extended faith community, Travis Anderson, Melissa Barish, Elma Dorr, Eric Eisenlor, Carol Erbstrasser, Michelle Earthley Johnson, Paul Fisher, Shelby Fullman, Cynthia Granger, Gordon Hansen, Kelly Kettleton, Trish McGlairlin, 
Dan Meyer, Bruce Opine Jr., Rhonda Smith, Esther Sir, Marlis Bispe, and all these whom we name from the silence of our hearts. And we ask and pray that our resurrection faith can comfort and strengthen the Anger family in the death of Darlene and the Shassel family in the death of Jean. Grant them the power of and the hope of our resurrection to new life as they grieve their deaths. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we were taught to pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So receive this benediction once again in Psalm 4. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed, blessed week. Take care.